There's a quick mental trick that special operations in the military are using to improve their sniping marksmanship up to 85% in recent studies, and it's something that you can use at home to improve your focus, memory, reaction time, and impulse control. In this video, we're gonna take you step by step through the mindfulness-based attention training protocol and use a blood flow measurement device to show how it actually increases the activity to your frontal lobe, which is responsible for these brain performance measures. You don't need this measurement device at home to do the training, but it's nice to show on the video and validate these effects. This training is based on the mindfulness-based training protocol outlined in these research studies by the University of Miami and by the lead researcher's book, Peak Mind, by Dr. Amishi Jha. Dr. Jha was recently on the Joe Rogan Experience explaining her excitement that the training effects actually translated to real world performance, which has been a problem with brain training protocols in the past. Brain training games. So, so what are these games? So like? these are kind of like simple video games, attentionally demanding. There's many companies out there that were offering them and there was no benefit. There was no transfer. And you come in the lab and do these rigorous tests of attention and we saw benefits on those tests. We saw transfer. The researchers did find that this technique had some immediate benefit for those who learned it, but worked best if practiced 12 minutes a day for four weeks. I'll take you through the training protocol now, and at the end of the video, we'll discuss how to apply this technique at any time to enhance your focus in the moment. Part of the MBAT protocol is called open monitoring, and it involves checking in on how you're feeling emotionally before you start anything. This really recruits more brain circuits so that you can use them later in your focus practices. So today I'm gonna to check in on how I'm feeling. I'm actually feeling a little stressed and tight in my chest because I have this meeting coming up and I'm trying to finish this video. <laughs> so that's how I'm feeling today. Are you stressed? Are you relaxed? Are you happy? Are you anxious? These are all things that you should take into account before engaging in the mindfulness training. A cool feature that they're adding to the Mendy app is that you actually can log this before doing your mindfulness training exercise, which helps with some accountability from day to day, as well as being able to see trends over time. So I'm going to go ahead and log my mood right now. Now, a quick note, if you are worried about the accuracy of the Mendy, I've included a link in the description below to their FNIR's signal validation data and there will be an upcoming peer review paper from a third party that was able to validate the increases in blood flow in relation to cognitive load while test subjects wore the Mendy and played different difficulty levels of Tetris. The next skill set in the MBAT is called body awareness. So just like we checked in on how we were feeling emotionally, we are going to do what's called a body scan by starting at the tips of our toes, going all through our feet, through our legs, through our hips, up through our back and torso, our arms, and all the way up through our face and head. And this builds a mental map in your mind of how your body is feeling that day. Do you have different areas of tension, relaxation, hot, cold sensations? These are all things that you should take into account as you do the body scan. Now with Mendy, I'll take a deep breath and calibrate to set a baseline, and then I'll do the body scan while I'm actually in the exercise to show you that it increases blood flow to my prefrontal cortex. So we got a big increase of blood flow to my frontal lobe, which is what I normally experience when I calibrate and then do a body scan. You really are recruiting all those brain circuits to create a mental map of where your body is. And in my opinion, that makes you more ready for the mindfulness training that happens afterwards. After the emotional check-in, open monitoring, and body scan, the MBAT protocol talks about concentration. Now concentration is the most common thing that's talked about in meditation. It's this idea that you pay attention to your breath or a different meditation object and try to sustain your attention for long periods of time on it. If it wanders, 
then you gently bring it back to that meditation object like your breath. The difficulty with this is if you stay on the superficial level, you really haven't recruited all the brain resources that you could have if you primed before doing the meditation exercise. So as we saw, if I do emotional check-in and body scan, it recruits a lot of blood to my prefrontal cortex, which then I can take into the concentration exercise and hopefully get a better result. So what I like to do is maintain that mental map of where I am emotionally as well as how my body is feeling and then project that as my breath into the ball. So I'm almost sending that mental map as breath into the ball to get it to go up. Let's try it. So if you see, we got a more gradual increase on the ball because I already did the body scan, which recruited a lot of blood flow to my frontal lobe and then calibrated to that new level, but still my concentration increased that blood flow a little bit more. That's where most people get to and then they plateau and get confused about what they're supposed to be doing next. It can get a bit boring if you are just concentrating on a ball all the time and trying to make it go up with your concentration. For a little bit more information, I checked in with Stanford neuroscientist, Dr. Ben Ryan, on how he likes to use meditation in his brain training and how that corresponds to his use of the Mendy. So I'm a neuroscientist. I'm a postdoc at Stanford University. Through my research, I've gained a deep understanding of, of how that happens, how cells interact, and how those, uh, those interactions can change with repeated use or repeated uh, lack of use. It definitely feeds right into the concept of neurofeedback training and how you know, repeated exercise or activation of a certain brain area or two brain areas in conjunction can then strengthen, you know, function of uh, that one brain area or the two brain areas together. It took a while to figure out what worked the best. And that's what works for me is, is entering this space where I kind of try to imagine that I take deep breaths. And every time I exhale, I try to imagine that I'm my brain is releasing endogenous opioids and I'm entering this place of just like serenity and it works for me. And I actually do, I mean, you know, it's, who knows what's happening up here, except for that we know that my prefrontal cortex is becoming more active because I have Mendy on to tell me that. And that's really where the fourth part of the MBAT protocol comes into play and is actually what I talked about quite a bit on the Mendy app in a tutorial that I filmed in the past. It's this idea of emotional connection. So you can use your gratitude and emotions to project into the ball as well to really increase the flavor of what's going on in your meditation sessions. I've got how I'm feeling emotionally. I understand how my body feels. I'm feeling grounded. My concentration is on the ball, but I'm also sending what's called meta or loving gratitude into the ball at the same time. So as I breathe into the ball, I'm really appreciative of not only the ball and the neurofeedback exercise for training my brain to make my brain nice and healthy and function better, but I'm also as much as possible projecting this sense of gratitude and peacefulness of your health and well-being of you and your family, the opportunities that are coming to you in the pursuit of personal development. There's so many things to be thankful for and project into that meditation experience. I'm going to try to combine all four right now. Let's see how I do. Took me a little bit to settle down and get started there, but we definitely saw more and more recruitment of my blood flow to my prefrontal cortex, meaning that my brain is just activating that I'm present, that if I carried that in my everyday activities, I would be that much more effective. This protocol may seem simple, but doing the body scan, emotional check-in, and loving kindness attention has now been shown to have real world effects on your attention. So using these practices in a daily mindfulness practice can be extremely beneficial, and I know they've had profound impacts on my own life. So how do you apply this in the present moment in your day-to-day -day activities? If at any moment you're feeling distracted or scattered, stop, take a breath, recognize how you are feeling emotionally, do a quick body scan to ground yourself, and then direct your focus with a good mood towards whatever you are trying to pay attention to. If you know that you are going to need to focus for an extended period of time to read a book or shoot a target, 
It can help to do this as a priming exercise before you even start the task. Dr. Jha's research has shown that doing this as a daily mindfulness meditation practice will sharpen this skill set. You can build this week by week by doing meditation sessions with an emotional check-in, a body scan, and loving kindness attention on your breath or a meditation object like the Mendy Ball. Hope that helps. You can start using this training immediately. If you want to practice with a brain blood flow tracker like the Mendy, click this video here for more information on that.